Could Mary Kay Olsen be involved in Heath Ledger's death? She has been accused of supplying the drugs that ultimately killed Heath. He was an actor in his prime, and he was working extremely hard on his role as the Joker. He actually ended up winning an Oscar for his performance, but unfortunately, he was dead. What's freaky about Heath's passing is that Mary Kay Olsen had a bizarre role in the incident. A massage therapist found Heath's body, and instead of calling police, she called Mary Kate Olsen. This massage therapist called Mary Kate three times before trying to call the police. Why did the massage therapist call Mary Kate Olsen and not try to call Heath's dad or his sister or police? What are they trying to hide? So let's get into it. So there are two people we're going to be talking about in today's video, Heath Ledger and Mary Kay Olsen. Heath Ledger was an Australian actor who moved to the States in 1998 to further his acting career. You guys may recognize him from some of your favorite movies because he was a huge actor until he unfortunately passed away in 2008 at the age of 28. And of course, Mary Kay Olsen is an actress as well. Mary Kay and Ashley were featured in the show Full House, and they have been famous most of their lives. So today we're going to talk about this messy situation and how Mary Kay Olsen has been blamed for Heath Ledger's death. The reason why we're talking about this situation is because there was a TikTok that went viral that broke down a theory that Mary Kay Olsen and Heath Ledger were casually dating and hooking up until he passed away and she could be responsible for supplying him the sub substances that caused him to die. Over time, we did learn some more about what really happened in that apartment. At this hour, the details are still unfolding. And then, of course, La Pièce de Résistance would be Mary Kate Olsen. Mary Kate Olsen. We all heard that and thought, what? So that viral TikTok actually was removed from the internet, which makes me think that the Olsen twins sent their lawyers and shut it down. But a lot of people believe that Mary Kate had her hand in this situation. Actually, recently, Mary Kate has been going through it because she filed an emergency plea to divorce from her husband, which they have a 17 year age gap, which is fine. I mean, at least they met each other as adults. But according to E! News, the drama with her divorce was just way too much. It got very ugly. So she left her home in New York City and went to her sister, Ashley Olsen. So Mary Kate has been going through her own struggles with her personal divorce. But let's go back in time and talk about the day that Heath passed away because he wasn't feeling that great and he was making a bunch of phone calls that night. I spoke to Heath Ledger three hours or four hours before he died, and he seemed to be having a miserable time sleeping. Heath's father reported that Heath had been on the phone with his sister Kate the night before, um, that he told her he wasn't feeling well, and that Kate had actually warned him not to mix prescriptive drugs. So already on the night of his passing, he wasn't feeling that great. And even his sister, Kate, was warning him not to mix prescription drugs because it's not like it's going to go and help him sleep any better. On this day, Heath Ledger had a massage scheduled at his home. So his massage therapist, Diana, came to his home for their appointment. So on January 22nd, 2008, this massage therapist, Diana, came to Heath's home and she found his body laying on the ground, face down, completely naked, and she doesn't call police right away. A massage therapist went to his Manhattan apartment to give him a scheduled massage. She calls his cell phone because he failed to answer her knock on the door. She goes in and sets up her massage table even while Heath Ledger is lying there. I don't know how this massage therapist, Diana, walks into the apartment. Heath isn't there. And then she sets up her table like nothing has happened. I mean, I'm assuming at this point she didn't notice that he was just laying there. But it's a little bizarre that she came in and she just started setting up. But maybe he has a big apartment. You know, he was on the other side of the room. She was just there to do her job. But I think it's interesting that she set up the table and everything while his lifeless body was laying over there. And that's making a lot of noise but he doesn't stir, he doesn't wake up. 
Then the masseuse goes to try to shake Heath and wake him up and finds his body cold to the touch. So I'm sure Diana started freaking out because she came into this apartment to give him his regular massage and he's just completely unconscious on the ground. At this point, she starts calling Mary Kate Olsen, which doesn't really make sense to me because I would call 911 right away, but she called Mary Kate Olsen and Mary Kate decided to send some private security to his apartment. She was actually across the country in California at this point, so I don't think Mary Kate could just like show up and person, but she sent her trusted security guards. It turns out that this massage therapist, Diane, spent about nine minutes contacting Mary Kay Olsen, which is a long time. I mean, if Heath wasn't fully like dead at this point, like could they have saved him if they got police there sooner? Probably not, but it's again bizarre that Mary Kay Olsen was her first call and maybe not Heath's family. The massage therapist did use Heath's phone to call Mary Kay Olsen, so she could have like looked up mom or dad or anyone or his recent calls and saw that he called his own sister before calling Mary Kay Olsen. So it turns out that he overdosed from prescription pills, and federal investigators back in 2008 wanted to question Mary Kay Olsen about how Heath got the these painkillers because it turns out that this contributed to his accidental overdose. But at this point, she was refusing to talk to these investigators and she wanted immunity. So she wanted to have immunity from any potential charges before she spoke to these federal investigators, which is a red flag to me because it's like, is she already like anticipating some charges for her involvement? Her lawyer actually made a statement that she had nothing to do with the drugs and that she's already told the government officials everything they need to know. Investigators found that there were two different types of painkillers in Heath's system, oxycodone and hydrocodone. But the problem here is that these drugs were obtained with phony prescriptions or by other illegal means. So how would he have gotten this medication that would ultimately lead to his death? It looks like he also had a few other prescriptions in his system, like anti-anxiety medication and sleeping pills, which were prescribed legally. So the painkillers are the red flags. The medical examiner's office wouldn't say what concentrations of each drug was found. So was there a lot of the painkillers or a lot of the sleeping medicine or what? But they said Said that it was clear that he was killed by the combination of these drugs. But the biggest question here is why is Mary Kate Olsen involved and why did this masseuse know to call Mary Kate before everyone else? The couple weren't ever officially dating, so why did the masseuse call her and why was Mary Kate Olsen's number on his speed dial? They were supposedly casually dating for three months before his passing. They were hooking up, but they weren't interested in making it exclusive so it sounds a little bit messy but they were like i guess like friends with benefits or something like that but i cannot get over the fact that this masseuse who just found this actor dead on the ground completely nude spent nine minutes making three calls to mary kate olsen before calling 911 for help there's there's just something i cannot get over when it comes to that like what did this massage therapist know that mary kate olsen also knew or what were they scheming? Also, what would Mary Kay Olsen's like security guards have to do with this situation? Like, why would her security guards be sent to this apartment for what? Like to go and confiscate things or to collect evidence or like, I don't understand why they would be of any help. I mean, and I'm sure at this point, if they were dating, Mary Kate was probably freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, this guy that I'm dating is literally like, he's passed away. So maybe, you know, she wants to have her people to go and check to make sure it's legit. But I feel like if you really care about their well-being, you want the police and the medics to be there to hopefully try to save them. She became concerned. So she used his phone. Calls a client that she had in common with, Heath Ledger. The masseuse did not call 911. She called not once, not twice, but three times his very good friend, another celebrity, Mary Kate Olsen. There's no doubt in my mind that Heath probably accidentally took his life. I mean, I don't know if he was planning on taking his life in general, but it was an accidental overdose. But a lot of people believe that this proves that Mary Kate Olsen had a deeper connection to his death. One person wrote that they believed that she either knows or helped him get 
these medications that resulted in his overdose? We were all stunned. We, we never knew that there was a connection. Apparently, Mary-Kate tells the masseuse she didn't say she was going to call 911 for. She said, I'm sending over a security guard. Why would Mary Kate want to send her security guard over there? And why would the massage therapist need to make so many calls? Like, why couldn't they just discuss this on, you know, in, in one phone call, not three phone calls? It, it makes me think that she got the call and then Mary Kate was like, oh, sh like, I need to figure out, like, how to save myself. So then she called her security team. Maybe they called back. They went back and forth. It's all really sketchy. And it's sketchy that she wouldn't speak to investigators like she is obviously involved here in some way because the massage therapist decided to call her so why won't she speak to investigators her lawyer michael miller said that we have provided the government with relevant information including facts in the chronology of events surrounding heath's death and he added that mary kate has no idea how heath got these drugs they don't know who the source was she has nothing to do with it. Also, it's kind of freaky that Mary Kate wants immunity from prosecution before speaking to the DEA. So she wants to make sure that she can't get in trouble for, I guess, supposedly, allegedly supplying these drugs to Heath that resulted in his passing. So she there's something sketchy here if her lawyer is doing all this talking she won't speak to investigators she wants immunity i feel like if you're asking for immunity you already know that you did something wrong and to this day people still believe that mary kate is the person who knows where these drugs came from or supplied the drugs or whatever we all know that the olsen twins have struggled with drug use before so it makes sense to me that people came to this assumption that she may have supplied them because they have been known to use prescription medication before. But a few months after Heath passed away, Mary Kate did issue a statement and said that Heath was a friend. His death is a tragic loss. So a very short and sweet statement. Of course, she doesn't want to implicate herself or make it seem like they had a closer relationship than they had because she doesn't want to be held accountable for anything. Honestly, I don't know what kind of crime Mary Kate could be charged with because, I mean, it's it's not like she, you know, is the direct reason why he passed away. Maybe it could be like a manslaughter charge or something if she provided him the drugs or pointed him in the right direction. But I don't think it would be that serious of a crime because it's not like she actually took his life, but she may have provided the drugs that resulted in his death. Actually, that TikToker who went viral and got in trouble for their TikTok said in their video that they believe that Mary Kate supplied the drugs and that's why there was this whole sketchy mess with her sending her security guards and probably trying to hide everything. I don't know why Mary Kate would try to remove this TikTok video. I mean, it did go viral, but this incident was over 10 years ago. So what is she trying to hide? She must have sent some type of cease and desist to the creator or contacted TikTok to have this video removed. Towards the end of Heath's life, he was working a lot because he had a major role in Batman as the Joker. And some people believe that his role in this movie could have led to him having thoughts of taking his own life. He was so extremely committed to this role as the Joker that he had a diary called Heath Ledger's Joker Diary, where he wrote certain like messages and techniques to himself to help him commit to this role as the Joker. Supposedly, Heath was isolating himself from the rest of the world. He was locked up in his hotel room and he was trying to fully become the Joker, which I've seen this with other actors as well. I've seen like Lady Gaga, she like became that like person for the Versace, the Gucci movie, I believe. She like really took on that role and some actors have to do that. They have to fully immerse themselves into that role, into that lifestyle so they act really well on camera. Nowadays, Heath Ledger's Joker Diary is iconic and people look at it as an example of how dedicated he was to his craft. I mean, he would put lines in there and little comic strips and everything he could find to really become this character. The isolation part is really concerning to me because he really isolated himself away from everyone to prepare for this role, which is really a red flag here. I mean, he would isolate himself 
for months at a time, locking himself in his apartment or hotel room. Some people have actually looked into this diary for clues about his passing because they were like at the same time, like he was working on this role, working on this movie. Um, I guess luckily they got most of it done before he passed away and that's how he was able to later on win an Oscar. But on some of the final pages in his diary, he has his notes and he wrote bye bye in big letters over the notes, which people think that was like his way of like kind of saying bye. I mean, I don't know why you would take these notes and then write bye bye all over it so large, but obviously he was going through a lot at that time. This article writes, simply put, despite his journal's cryptic nature and his devotion to the Joker role, Heath's death wasn't a direct cause of his preparation. His drug issues weren't a phenomenon, and his debut in the DC universe wasn't driving him into any kind of depression. His sister, Kate, set the record straight on her brother's attitude towards the role. She said that he wasn't depressed about the Joker. His Joker diary was very concerning out of context, but it turned out to be nothing more than a tool by which Heath used to pull off the performance of a lifetime. Like I mentioned earlier, he did actually win an Oscar for his performance, which is amazing, but it's sad that he wasn't there to accept it and his parents were there along with his sister. But um, I don't know, I, the diary definitely rubs me the wrong way. Like I wish we could see every single page of it and really break it down because I do feel like there's a little bit more like I don't know, cryptic messaging in there than what we've seen. At least what I've seen online, I've seen some videos of the diary itself and it just looks like an absolute mess. I cannot imagine what was going through his mind. As far as Mary Kay Olsen, it looks like she's moved on from the situation. They weren't ever really officially dating. So I guess they were like friends with benefits and maybe using some prescription drugs together and that was about it. But I do think it's really like sus how she just tried to like wash her hands of everything and she wanted immunity and she obviously had so there's some type of connection here if the massage therapist is calling her three different times especially if he was on the phone with you know his family and his sister before it just doesn't make sense that mary kate olsen would be the first call but since heath's passing there have been some things that mary kate has done that has pissed off fans so at one point mary kate decided to sell a purse with prescription pills all over it that was worth fifty five thousand dollars which just looks really bad because this bad is more than a car and it's glamorizing pills and prescriptions and it doesn't really make sense that she would push this type of I guess product I mean it's pushing the narrative that drugs are cool and you guys know like euphoria and all of that has been glamorizing all of the drug uses which isn't cool but people are disgusted that she is selling this designer purse because people associate her with the prescription pills that Heath took and now she's selling a $55,000 bag with pills all over it I mean the bag isn't even that cute so I don't really understand why they would make this bag to sell but they've done some questionable things before I mean that's every one in Hollywood at this point. But I want to hear what you guys think about this video in the comments below. I just randomly thought about talking about this. I think someone may have sent me an email. So here's my email if you guys have any other video ideas for me. I think it's a very sketchy situation and obviously Mary Kate got away with this one. But let's go ahead and open a PO Box package item. Ooh, this one looks like it's from um, Amazon, but let's go ahead and see what it says. It looks like we have a note right here. I love your videos. I thought it would be a good idea for you to be able to use this to write notes in. I designed this notebook myself. Oh, I hope you like it. Happy holidays and happy birthday. I am a little behind on my PO Box package items. I'm sorry, guys. But wow, look at this. So it looks like she actually designed this. Things I overthink notebook. Oh, nice. It's got like big lines, too. So this is like a notebook. It's a really thick notebook where I can write things in. Why does everything taste like chicken? How do dolphins sleep? What is the difference between cupcake and a muffin? How can bees fly with such big bodies and little wings? Interesting thoughts. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Melinda. This is so cute. I'll try to link it below and let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments below. I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.